Welcome to the Having It All podcast, the show about what it takes to live an abundant, loving life. My name is Matthew Bivens, and each week I'm helping you get out of your head so that you can truly have it all. Let's do it. What's up, everybody? Matthew Bivens here, and welcome to another episode of the Having It All podcast. This is the show where we talk about living and experiencing and creating your abundant loving life. So I am excited that you're here with me today on a Thursday. I don't normally publish on a Thursday. And today I just wanted to give you guys a little bonus, bonus episode. And inspired by life. That's what it is. It was inspired by life. Uh, So I'm asked quite often, where do you get your ideas from? You know, you've been podcasting for a long time. How do you how do you come up with ideas and things to talk about? Well, life is an amazing source of ideas for me. Um, it's one of the handful of places that I'm constantly pulling from. And, you know, there are so many things in your life to be inspired by when you're tuning into them. Today's episode was inspired by something I was watching on TV recently, actually just this past weekend. Over the weekend, I was tuning into HBO, and I was watching this show called Hard Knocks. Hard Knocks is a behind-the-scenes look at the NFL teams. Uh, Each, I guess each season of the show, they'll profile a different NFL team, take you behind the scenes, into the locker room, all that great stuff. And I was watching Hard Knocks, and boy, did, did the content I was seeing completely inspire me to the point that I jumped off the couch... It was still running on TV. I jumped off the couch, went back to my office, grabbed my mic, hit record, and just started talking because what I saw was so inspiring to me. So that's what you're going to be hearing today. I actually did a little bit of editing magic to splice my recording from after watching Hard Knocks into this intro here, so you'll hear that later on. But uh, I want to plug something real quick, Um, plug, promote, whatever, whatever the word is. Uh, I want to share that today, Thursday, is the final day of the Life by Design, Not by Default Virtual Summit. So in the last episode, I'll let you guys know that this virtual summit was upcoming. My great friend Dara had created this amazing virtual summit with dozens and dozens of awesome speakers. It's like 20 or 30 or 40 hours of content that's all for free, 100% free. And it started yesterday, September 12th. That was day one. Today was, or excuse me, what day is it? Today's Thursday. So Tuesday is the day that it started. Wednesday was day two. Today's Thursday, and it's the final day. It's the final day of the summit. Now, what's super cool is yours truly is speaking today. So I did a a, a topic, I guess a conversation on the topic of the new paradigm of love, sex, and relationships. And that's going to be airing in the virtual summit today. I actually have a time frame, I think. What time is it? It's going to be airing... Uh, oh, I don't even know the time, time frame. But it's going to be going down today on Thursday, September 14th. So you can still tune in. It's free to, to watch it. Um, and, you know, I'm not going to plug something if I don't think it's valuable for you all. Um, my, you know, my conversation is going to be pretty cool. But everybody else's is pretty amazing as well. Uh, Day one had Deepak Chopra. I mean, that's incredible. Um, So go check it out. The website is lifebydesignsummit.com. Just go to lifebydesignsummit.com. You can sign up totally for free, and you can watch the episodes until they disappear because they're not there forever. Uh, there's There's a time frame, and then the content goes away. So go check it out and tune in today, and you will see me speaking, and uh, you can get some some great little nuggets of information about love, sex, and relationships, which I know you're interested in. I know it. I can feel it. (laughs) All right, let's flow with a little bit of magic. Magic is our ability to influence ourselves, others, and life in an empowering way. And I share magic on the top of every episode because I want to strengthen my awareness of this magic of these incredible things in my life that I'm so grateful for because I'm playing for an abundant, loving life. I'm playing to experience abundance and align with abundance 
and be loving and show up loving and receive love in all the different areas of life. And guess what? It's already happening. It's already happening, but sometimes we just don't tune into it. So magic is us tuning into it. So my magic went down this past Monday. I had a large gathering of a number of folks in my community, uh, my, my wellness and consciousness community. Um, we came together in like a big format accountability group. And I was facilitating, so I was the one who was creating the space for others to put their stuff on the table and sort through their things uh, with the, within a group. And, you know, it's not easy to do. It's pretty hard to put forth your, your epic challenges, the things in your life that you are most stuck on. So I was really doing my best to, you know, hey, this is the space for that. This is, the, this is your opportunity to get feedback from 10 different people. So after I did my spiel and after a couple people shared, my life coach turned and said to me, hey, Matt, why don't you put your stuff on the table? Why don't you walk your talk? Uh, because he knew that Sarah and I had some things that had come up for us recently. So the magic within that is just having a community of people who will hold me accountable to my greatness. They don't let me hide out. They don't let me play small. They don't let me simply walk it and not talk it. They hold me accountable. And they practice courage over consideration because it takes courage to call someone out. It takes courage to say, hey, listen, you're talking. Why don't you start walking? And, you know, these folks are bold with their words and their feedback. And I'm very grateful to have created that type of community for myself. And you know what? Honestly, it sucks at times. It sucks to get blunt, direct feedback that isn't sugarcoated. Uh, it's, it's hard to sit there and, and, and be in the fire. You know, it's uncomfortable. It makes you feel nervous to be put on the spot. Uh, but that's where the growth is. That's where growth happens. It's in being vulnerable. It's in shining the light on the dark corners of yourself, those things that you want to hide away, those, the, the person that you are in your secrecy. It's shining light on that and sharing the beliefs that, quite frankly, aren't serving you and putting all those things out and then actually receiving and surrendering to the healthy feedback. That's where the growth is. So my magic is just creating that community, my coach calling me out, me putting things out there and receiving the feedback. And uh, I'm, I'm working on surrendering to it um, each day. So that's my magic. And it's, uh, it's posted in the Already Balanced Game app. So if you're, if you're watching me, you're going to see it in there. And I'd love to watch you. So connect with me through the app. Now let's get into a little bit of listener love because I love you. I do. I appreciate you. I'm grateful for you. And this week, I got a really great uh, iTunes review. It's short and sweet and awesome. And this one comes from Anna. Two N's and three A's. I love it. And the title is Peace and Success. And the, the feedback on iTunes is simply, I'm about to change almost my whole mindset this fall. <laughs> That's it. I'm about to change almost my whole mindset this fall, and it had five stars. So I'm assuming that Anna, you enjoyed what you were uh, what you were listening to. So I love it. I appreciate you, Anna. Thanks for taking the time out to go to iTunes to subscribe to the show, to leave a rating, to write a review. All of that means so much to me. It really does. That's a major, major deposit in my tank. And you know, it helps other people find the show. It helps the show to get discovered. So. I truly appreciate you, Anna. And if you want to leave a review on iTunes that could potentially be, uh, be read by me in an episode, then go over to iTunes or Apple Podcasts now. I think it's called Apple Podcasts now. Uh, I have an Android phone, so I don't, I, I'm pretty sure it's Apple Podcasts. Uh, and there you can first subscribe. Subscribe to the show. That's the first and most important thing. Subscribe. Then leave a rating. And then write a review. So those three things, I will uh, just continue with the gratitude. And um, yeah, love all of you. All right, let's get into this episode because it's pretty cool. Again, it was spur of the moment. Um, sometimes I have notes in my episodes and outlines and all that. This was not it. I just was watching. It's like, oh, man, this is incredible. And jumped off the couch, went, grabbed my mic, and began recording. So let's dive in. 
So I was just watching the TV show Hard Knocks. If uh, if you've never seen it, Hard Knocks is this show on HBO where they take you behind the scenes of an NFL team in preseason through training camp and preseason, and you get to see all the stuff that happens behind the scenes. You get to see the coaches talking to each other. You get to see how the players interact. You get to see the processes that go down in an NFL franchise. And, you know, I, I enjoy football. I wouldn't consider myself a football guy. I can probably name like 10 football players. Uh, I don't have a team or anything like that, but I think it's fascinating, fascinating to see behind the curtain on something as huge as the NFL. And so I've watched, I don't know how many seasons of Hard Knocks. And so right now, uh, I was just hanging out. Maya's taking a nap and I was watching um, the the season currently with the Cleveland Browns. And I feel like whenever I turn on that show, I always seem to turn it on right at the part where where the teams are making their final cuts. And so what happens is during the training camp and during the preseason, as you get closer to the beginning of the official football season, the size of the roster has to get trimmed down. And you go from like 70-something dudes to 60-something dudes down to 50-something dudes. And what I was just watching is they were making their final cuts. So it's like, I don't know, a week away, two weeks away maybe from the beginning of the season. You got all these guys who are ready to go. Some of them are, are younger, They're, they might be rookies, and they might be looking on getting their very first NFL contract. Others are veterans, they've been here, done that, and they're just ready to get, get on the field, lace it up, and do what they've been doing. But for a number of them, they get right to that edge, they're on the precipice, and then, boop, they get cut. And that dream and that expectation, all of it gets snatched away. And what is so wild is I, as a viewer, get to watch them go through that process. And it is fascinating. Like, I feel almost uncomfortable sometimes watching it. Like, I shouldn't be watching this, right? So they'll have, like, an assistant coach pick up the phone and dial someone. And he'll be like, hey, Dan. I don't know if there's a dude on the team named Dan, but that's the name that came to my mind. He'll be like, hey, Dan, I need you to come in. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, we got to have the conversation, so just come on in. And you're like, whoa, Dan's world just got rocked in that moment with that phone call. Because Dan was hanging out, doing his thing, hoping and dreaming, maybe expecting that he was going to make this team. And for the next however many months, he was going to be playing at the pinnacle of his craft in the NFL. And then here's the dude, phone call comes in. Hey, Dan, we got to bring you in. And Dan knows what's up. He knows exactly what that phone call means. He knows that he was just released. And so what happens on the show is the guy makes the phone call, and the next scene you see Dan coming in the office, and they just, they, they don't, they don't like soften it up. They don't try, they don't, they don't lube it up. They don't do anything. They just say, hey, Dan, you know what? You were great, man, but we got to let you go. You know, and we really appreciate you having around. You got so much heart and you grew so, you know, so much throughout this process. And, you know, you were you came from from this place with your blocking. And, you know, that's you you got some you got some work to do in in your blocking skills. But, man, you were fantastic. And, you know, the fact that you made this a hard decision for us, you know, that really is a testament to to just how far you've come. And keep your head up, man, because you've got some big things ahead of you. You know, like one love, baby. Peace. (laughs) <laughs> like I just watched three of those conversations happen. And what it really, what it touched within me is a couple of things. The first is that, you know, these, these men, these, these dudes are at the top of their game. And the way in which they handle themselves when they get news like that is freaking Jedi. Now, I, I do understand that this is the TV show, and while the camera is, is at them and that little red record light is on, they might be kind of cal- calm and composed, and then when it goes off, who knows, maybe they're flipping tables or you know drinking or whatever. But as I'm watching this happen, as they're, they're in these conversations, like they have this level of, it's not personal, it's business. And I completely am inspired by that. Because in life, man, we get those phone calls. 
life comes in and smacks us in the face. And sometimes it smacks us over and over and over. And I know for myself in my life, I haven't always had the mentality and the perspective of this ain't personal. It's just life. But Dan and the other dudes I was just watching, I mean, they would say, hey, you know what? It's a business. And they understand the business. And so even though their emotions must be wrecked, I, I, I can only imagine what's going on inside when that dream or that reality just gets shattered. I mean, they've got to be torn up. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's tears. I'm sure there's frustration and anger. But through all of it, they still have this attitude and perspective that, you know what, it's just business. It's not personal. And I know what I've done in my life, and I've, what, I've watched other people do this, they take it personally. They think that, that God or the universe or life has it out for them because they keep getting smacked down, because they keep getting those same types of phone calls. And as you start to believe that, that some, some force, some presence has it out for you, things get real. Things get tough. Because imagine what would happen with those NFL players if they started to believe it was personal. If they started to believe that the coach or the trainer or the team or the organization or the league had it out for them. You start to wear on some really interesting beliefs. And those beliefs become heavy. You know, you start to to look into things and you start to try to to dissect. Well, what did that mean? What did, what did he mean when he said that? Well, why didn't that guy get, why did he get more than me? Wait a minute. They've been out to get me since the beginning. And that sort of mindset, man, that when you start to feed your ego with, with little thoughts like that, it can run wild. It can just go. And in those moments when you're, when you're emotionally vulnerable, when, when you feel hurt, when, when, when you feel like, you just, man, you just feel exposed. And a, and a seed of, it's, it's a personal. If that seed gets planted, it can do some really, really damage, damaging things. And I know that because I've experienced that. I've experienced those little seeds when something happened in my life. And it wasn't personal. It was business. But I took it personally. And boy, my mind can go. My mind can just can spin that web so fast. And get myself all caught up in it. And here I am taking all these things personally, completely missing the point. Because here's what happens when you take it personally, right? Like these guys, you know, they got, they got cut from the team. And they're going to go home and they're going to feel. And they're going to allow that emotion to process. And then at some point, they're going to be like, all right, let's get back up. Let's go. Because they recognize it's not personal. It's business. And so great. They gave me some feedback. They gave me some things to work on. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to go work on that. So that the next time when I have an opportunity like this, the next time I get to be on a team like that, I'm not going to be near the bottom of the roster, even fearful that I might get cut. I'm going to work my butt off so I'm at the top and I'm just chilling because I know I've put every single thing I possibly could into this. That's the difference between taking something personal and recognizing that it ain't personal. It's just business. And there's a part of me that wants to feel like that's heartless, like that that's a heartless approach. And that's okay. <laughs> that's a belief, you know, to believe that, well, these are just heartless individuals who are all about the money and this and that. You know what? Hey, this in, in the context of this whole story, it is within the NFL. And, you know, bottom line, we understand what an organization like that is about. Like dollar signs are at the end of most of those people's you know, that's, that's like the end goal. That's at the finish line. But for this example and for it to be relatable and for you to be able to digest it, let's just recognize that life serves us up things that we don't want from time to time. And the quicker you begin to recognize it's not personal, the quicker you can get yourself back up and keep moving forward. Because once you start to believe that it's personal, that someone or something has a vendetta out for you, well, guess what? You are now focusing in your circle of concern. Stuff does not happen in your circle of concern. 
Things do not get done. Things are not accomplished when you're hanging out in your circle of concern. Things happen when you're hanging out in your circle of influence. Because those guys, Dan and his boys who got cut, guess what? Because they're in a place of power and recognizing this isn't personal, this is business, they're operating from their circle of influence, and now they can influence themselves to put in the reps that they need, to go get the training that they need, to go learn the skills that they need, so that the next opportunity, they don't get cut. One of you right now needed to hear that. I don't know who. (laughs) Maybe it was for me. But someone needed to hear that because as I'm watching this, I'm like, oh, my God. Like, it's still on in the background. I literally just jumped up and came over here and flicked on the mic because that spoke to me. That message hit me like, it's not personal. It's not personal. So stop thinking it's about you. Stop being so absorbed in you and everything that's going on with you. You miss the big picture when you do that. And I know it because I do that. Because I've, I've, I've done that. And so as much as I'm sharing this for you, I'm sharing this for myself to remind myself that, you know what, it's not personal. When stuff happens, when things don't go my way, when I have my expectations up and then, boop, they get dashed, it's not personal. And that within all of those experiences are opportunities. Like there's, there's something I can take from this and put it in my pocket and be like, okay, cool. I appreciate that. I'm equipped now. Let me go and and handle what I need to handle. And you know what? It might happen again. That's all right. Because I know I have the the fortitude. I know that my fire burns so hard that no little breeze is going to blow it out. So if this is stirring something up within you, you know, ask yourself, how, 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 how hot is your flame? Right? Ask yourself, how often are you operating from your circle of concern? Worrying about things that you can't handle rather than operating out of your circle of influence. Like there's so many things out there that we cannot control, yet we want to focus on them. It just, it is what it is, right? So many things that are just out of your control, but you want to focus on them and that's where you put your energy. Every ounce of energy that you put into your circle of concern, guess what? That's energy that's not going into your circle of influence. Every ounce of energy that Dan and those NFL players out there were putting into blaming the coach, blaming the system, blaming the league, guess what? That was energy that they were not depositing into themselves to work harder, to run faster, to train like they never trained before. Because what do you think gets them over that hump so that they can experience their dreams? It sure as hell isn't blaming others. You know what it is. I don't even need to say it. Ah, oh, I got to take a breath. Whew. I love this stuff. And I love that examples of this are just everywhere. Like life presents us with so many opportunities of learning. You know, we just got to tune our antenna to it. So that's all I got to say. That's what's coming right now. That's what's coming out of me. And uh, I feel like that message has run its course. So I appreciate you. Thank you for hanging out on this unconventional episode of the Having It All podcast. If you're, if you're new to the show, then, uh, then welcome. <laughs> welcome. This isn't always what it's like, but hey, you picked this one for a reason. So I guess you needed to hear that message yourself. And uh, for everybody else, I appreciate you. Thanks for showing up. Thanks for being you. Thanks for being consistent. My name is Matthew Bivens. Here is to you having it all. Quick note about the Having It All podcast. I am not a doctor nor a licensed therapist. I'm a guy with a story and a passion for conscious conversation. My thoughts, opinions, and beliefs are my own. So please consult with your doctor or healthcare provider regarding any questions or issues you have related to your personal, physical, or mental health.